This tutorial will show you how to complete a Vorslev analysis of recovery data collected at a monitoring well. When ideal recovery data are plotted as drawdown against time, the resulting recovery curve shows an exponential shape. If we change the scale of the y-axis to a logarithmic scale, keeping time on a linear scale, the data plot is a straight line. This type of graph is called a semi-log plot because only the y-axis is logarithmic. Note that the steps of a logarithmic axis increase by factors of 10. The straight line shape of the data on a semi-log plot will allow for graphical determination of a quantity Vorslev defines as basic time lag, or T0. To do this, we first recalculate drawdowns as a fraction of the maximum drawdown. Drawdown will now plot as a series of values from 1 to 0. A value of 1 corresponds to the maximum drawdown, and a value of 0 corresponds to no drawdown or static conditions. This way, no matter how many different sets of analyses we generate, our drawdown will always plot between 0 and 1. Vorslev defines T0 as the x value that corresponds to y equals 0.37. Vorslev has done the work of creating a conceptual model that relates the hydraulic conductivity of the formation to simplified equations describing the radial flow of groundwater to a well. The result is the Vorslev equation. In this exercise, I'm focusing on the application of this equation. A more detailed description of how to complete a bail down test is provided in a separate video. This example assumes that we have done the test and that we have some field data and that we're ready to analyze. The Vorslev equation requires that you know the dimensions of the well, including the screen length, the screen diameter, and the diameter of the well's riser pipe. The monitoring wells at our field site were constructed using 2 inch diameter pipe and a 15 foot long screen. Lowercase r refers to the radius of the screen and uppercase r refers to the radius of the solid riser pipe. In some cases, these can be different, but at our field site, they're the same. Converting the units, a 2-inch diameter monitoring well has a radius of 0.0254 meters. A 15-foot-long screen has a length of 4.57 meters. If we substitute these known quantities into the Vorslev equation and multiply through, all that is needed to calculate k is a value for t0. Here's an example using some simple field data collected by hand using a water level tape. The initial table of data will include time and water levels measured from the top of the pipe down to the water level in the well. The static water level was measured prior to any drawdown in the well. It's helpful to make a note of this at the top of your data table. The well was pumped and additional water levels were measured as the well recovered. The resulting table shows the time after pumping stopped and the water level at each time. Start by creating a third column called drawdown. The symbol for drawdown is S. Drawdown is the difference between the static water level and the level in the well after pumping or bailing. Calculate the drawdown by subtracting the static water level from the water level measured at each time in the table. For the first data point, at time equals 1 second, the drawdown is 5.10 meters minus 4.58 meters, which gives us 0.52 meters. Repeat the calculation for the rest of the values in the table, each time subtracting 4.58 meters from the observed water level. Your first value for drawdown was measured as close to time equals zero as possible. This is used as the maximum drawdown. Make a note of this value at the top of your table. Now make a fourth column labeled S over S max, the drawdown divided by the maximum drawdown. Calculate the fourth column of data as the observed drawdown at each time divided by the maximum drawdown. This normalizes the data to values between 0 and 1. The calculation for time equals 60 seconds is 0 0.16 meters divided by 0 0.52 meters equals 0 0.32. Normalized drawdowns are unitless. Repeat the calculation for the rest of the values in the table each time dividing the observed drawdown by 0 0.52 meters. Here's the example repeated, but this time with data collected using a data logger. A data logger would typically provide many more data points than the ones shown in this example, but to make the two examples comparable, I'm going to stick with the time intervals we used in the first example. The initial table of data will include time and data logger levels. The data logger measures the height of the water column over top of the logger. The reference point in this example is the top of the data logger. The static water level was determined from the logger data after it was placed in the well, but before any pumping. Drawdown is still just the difference between the static water level and the level in the well after pumping or bailing. 
In this case, calculate the drawdown by subtracting the logger level at each time in the table from the static logger reading. For the first data point, at time equals 1 second, the logger reading is 9.48 meters. 10 meters minus 9.48 meters gives us 0 0.52 meters. Repeat the calculation for the rest of the values in the table, each time subtracting the logger reading from 10. Since the drawdown in the well is the same whether it's measured from the top of the well or the bottom, the remaining steps are unchanged. The maximum drawdown is 0 0.52 meters. Normalized drawdown is S divided by S max, the drawdown divided by the maximum drawdown. The calculation for time equals 60 seconds is 0 0.16 meters divided by 0 0.52 meters equals 0 0.32. The values for normalized drawdown are also the same, regardless of the reference point for the original measurement of the water levels. Plot S over S max on the y-axis using a semi-log scale against time on the y-axis. Draw a line of best fit through your data, and the line will slope downwards. Locate the point 0.37 on the y-axis. This is the point where drawdown was equal to 37% of the total drawdown during the test. The reason for selecting the point 0.37 is related to Vorslev's derivation, which isn't covered in this exercise. As long as drawdowns are normalized to a scale from 0 to 1, this point, y equals 0.37, is used for the Vorslev analysis of any data set. Draw a horizontal line from this point to your line of best fit. Draw a vertical line from where these two lines intersect, connecting to the x-axis. The point where this line intersects the x-axis is the value of t0, the basic time lag as defined by Vorslev. The value for t0 is substituted into the Vorslev equation. By maintaining all units in meters and seconds, our value for hydraulic conductivity will also be in meters per second. Hydraulic conductivities from our field site could fall in the range anywhere from 10 to the minus 4 to 10 to the minus 8 meters per second.